Hi everybody, it's Bibiana and welcome back to my channel. So I'm excited because I'm doing a little chitty chatty video, kind of like just a life update because I'm getting a few questions about, you know, if I'm still working and if I'm studying or what I'm studying because I've actually gone back to uni and this whole channel mum team that I mentioned I joined, which I'm really excited about and just, you know, how I kind of balance all studying, working, vlogging, with having three very small young children who are actually not even in school yet. So I'm gonna share that with you today and hopefully it will clarify things and help. So yes, I'm still working as a dentist, both based in practice and in hospital. I really don't talk too much about my profession on this channel, mainly because that's not really the focus of where this channel is going in terms of giving tips and advice on how to get into union application process. Here and there when I get messages, I do reply and give, you know, CV advice and, you know, just encouragement where I can, where people are trying to get into these universities. But I always challenge people as to their why. Is it because they've got a relative who's doing it, especially things like medicine law and dentistry or is it because they've been led by the Holy Spirit? I know it probably sounds super deep but you have to realize this is such a huge commitment financially, emotionally, your time so you can't make these decisions lightly and I definitely was led by the law to go down this profession and you know I don't know exactly what road it's going to lead down but I'm just walking by faith and really just trying to you know seek him as to the purpose of it and I know it goes way beyond just thinking about my job as a nine to five and you know the other reason I don't really mention it that much because I'm still kind of surprised by the reaction I get you know when you finally mention your profession and then I'm like okay I'm a dentist and they kind of look at me like oh wow that's that's amazing I'm sure it's the same reaction other people get when they say they're a doctor or a lawyer or entrepreneur people kind of look at you like wow boss chick you're successful you're so amazing and all of a sudden they kind of elevate you to this standard of success and it kind of saddens me when you know I speak to young people and then they tell me oh my mama thinks I'm a failure because I didn't get into medical school or just in themselves they're like I'm such a failure because I tried and I failed all my exams so I couldn't make it into dental school or law school or all those kind of universities and I just look and I'm like failure should not be your biggest fear you know Succeeding at something God never told you to do should be. So this updates about my studies because I'm back at university doing a postgraduate qualification and it's kind of like why am I doing it, what am I doing, um, is it a dental qualification? So it is a dental postgraduate degree because what I did is an undergraduate degree. After I graduated there was a very strong desire in my heart to pursue postgraduate kind of specialty courses. But there's something about having three kids in under three years that kind of takes its toll on you and you kind of have to slow down. And I kind of got in that mummy zone where I'm like, okay, what do I do? Do I leave my job? Do I just, you know, stay in kind of my comfort zone? Or do I carry on doing what, you know, I believe God told me to do? I think for me, one of the things that's helped is obviously having a very supportive husband. And so we were able to prepare in advance as to when I was going to go back to doing my studies and pretty much I started early on even with the twins but I just did a lot of part-time courses so I've been doing them in bits basically I think the one I'm doing now which I just got into last year is been my biggest commitment because I kind of was thinking I'd be doing the course with only two children but after I sent off my application we found that we were pregnant with baby number three which is Idu and to be honest I was this close to being like okay let me just call them and cancel my application but I was well like no no let's just do it see how it goes Mommy? Yes, sweetheart? What are you doing? I'm doing a video. Why? Because it's Mummy's channel and she has to finish her video. Hi guys, it's my son. Alright, can you go downstairs? Why? Lovely, give me a kiss. Alright, where was I? Um, yes, so I did the application and I was pregnant with, I found out I was pregnant with Caleb Idu. And then, the day of my interview, I would have been like 39 weeks and 5 days. And even on the letter it said, we, you cannot change this interview date. Literally, it didn't even give an exception. It said, you cannot change it unless you're calling us to say you don't want to be on the course anymore. But I just emailed them saying, sorry, I know you have this policy, but I am due pretty much that week. And without hesitation, I got emailed back and they said, all right, we have a small window for the interviews. The best we can do is two weeks earlier. So I was 38 weeks. 
but you know I kind of just figured it's in the hospital anyway so you know I'll be okay so I went for the interview and then we had the waiting game and for I knew I had that letter that says congratulations you've been accepted of course I was really surprised and then kind of got a little bit scared I guess about thinking you know how are we gonna be able to provide what are we how are we to afford especially with three kids I never really anticipated having a young child and starting a course but you know what we walk by faith and not by sight and for my experience I know it's God who's opening a door is when it's something I need to depend on him more in order to be able to do it and even from my experience or let me not forget to add I'm actually dyslexic and dyspraxic and I think they put me when they did the assessment I'm like literally one of the worst kinds even the guy who did my assessment was kind of shocked I was even be able to achieve some of the things I have I don't do that to toot my own horn I do it to hopefully encourage you and give God the glory that you know if it's something that God's told you to do and if you live this faith journey and you walk it well then he will honor you and he will provide for you and he will meet you where you know the Bible says draw close to God and he will draw close to you and that's literally what I've been doing in everything I do because I can't do it by myself and by pursuing postgraduate qualifications I believe that I'm honoring him by doing it with excellence and it's something he has led me to so whether he's called you to do photography or cooking or baking I would say do it as unto a Lord, read, study, become better and you know it would be amazing to see Christians in those top positions as CEOs and everything who are doing things that the Lord has led them to do. Okay so the next question I'm going to talk about and probably my most common one is how do you do or how do you balance it being a wife, a mother of three, three young children who are not even in school yet and combine that with your studies and your career and also doing the YouTube and the blogging as well. So I think this probably would need a whole nother video on kind of like life management and balance and everything but I'm just going to summarize kind of the main things we do. My husband and I work and even though you see my mother in the vlogs that's usually on the weekend because both my parents my mom and dad are working full time as much as we kind of thought they retired when we had kids in fact I think they up their hours <laughs> but yeah they help when they can I really appreciate it and that's usually on the weekends which can give us a little bit of relief but during the hours that we're working we have to invest in childcare so the twins do go to nursery and we've got child minders and help with nanny so that's basically how we manage it with our working hours like I said we have three young children so we have to think about you know what we can do that is financially feasible but also with our children best interest at heart and we've kind of found a fine balance with what we're doing at the moment so then outside that balancing time to work on my YouTube which to be honest I do with the kids I would say I vlog as a family and then when they go to bed I'm working on my editing so I have to make sure things like you know I'm staying healthy and hydrated and blocking off time I think it's been one of the most important thing like having time blocks has really helped me being able to say no which I really struggled with and the other thing as well is having a timetable like we said um, my husband and I said on our finance video we have a budget a spreadsheet for everything and likewise we have pretty much a timetable for our day because I found one of the things that sorry for showing my husband is he would come home and he didn't really know if food was cooked or who was doing what I'm very fortunate to have a husband who does help but if we are both not communicating as to you know what we need help with it's gonna kind of cause a lot of chaos in the household which is really chaotic with kids so having a written down so we know what we're doing each and every day what events we're going to what the kids are eating even having like a meal plan but like I said this is a whole nother video but the truth is three kids is no joke so we kind of you know have to have things on lockdown I'm kind of glad to say that we have got a good system going I think the main reason we do is because my husband and I, we work as a team. It really is no, she does this, he does that kind of thing. My husband will change nappies, my husband will bath the children, and I will do the same thing as well. And I know that's not the reality for a lot of other women out there, a lot of other families. I do feel very fortunate about that. And, you know, he's still very much the leader of this home, and he's the head of our household, and he has the final say in everything. But I'm very grateful for the fact that we are able to work as a team and share a role. If I'm coming back home late, he's able to help out with the kids if he comes back vice versa so our kids are on the routine which really helps and children really do thrive on routine and also the most important thing is having quiet time daily 
being really being intentional about spending time with the Lord and getting into his word and getting wisdom for your life and how to live your life and how to raise these little humans that you've been given, how to steward your time well. When it comes to that as well, having that quiet time, it's giving God the best part of your day. I don't do my timetable and then say, uh, God, I can squeeze you in around 12.30. That's after my last patient. I should be able to do a Bible passage before I have a lunchtime meeting for work. No, because I know at that time I'm going to be shattered and my brain's probably going to be thinking about the meeting I have afterwards. I want to give God the best part of my day because I want to make sure I can hear what he's saying back to me where I'm not distracted. So there's no real rule as to when that could be. It might be first thing in the morning, it might be in the afternoon, it might be in the evening. If you have small children, you might have to think about getting up before they wake up. And if you have kids like mine, which really don't sleep, then, you know, do your quiet time with them. You know, it's important for us to be able to train our children in the word of God and for them to see us being intentional about our walk with God. And I really believe God will honor that time. And I've seen that in my own life as well, because even when I told God, oh my gosh, I have no time. Like I, especially with half term stuff and I have big exams coming up and I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? I don't have time to study. I remember my second exam, the kids had been sick. So it was just like round the clock all day dealing with two sick toddlers, plus looking after and nursing Caleb. And to be honest, I was completely worn out. But I just kept on going back to the Lord. I still had my dedicated time where I was going back to him. Even if it was just a few minutes, just like, Lord, fill me up, Lord, guide me, guide my life, give me strength, give me wisdom. And before I knew it, that same afternoon, I got a phone call. I'm going to say her name. I know she's watching Kika, because the next thing happened as well with my other friend, Nikki, who called me. And then she got the phone call out of the blue, and they're like, hey, girl, just wondering if you need any help. And you know what? When they called me to see if I need any help, I almost broke down crying. I remember Kika was like, are you OK? And I was just like, you know what? What made you call me? What made you think to you know, call me at this specific time when I actually needed the help? And she said, oh, you know, I just felt led to call. And, you know, that is just a reminder reminder to anyone out there who is you know wondering how am I going to balance it? how am I going to balance my having a child especially if you're a single mom and pursuing this course or this university or this you know qualification that I'm in court to or launching this business and the answer is we truly just have to walk by faith if it's what God has told you to he is our provider so all we have to do is take one step in front of the other in this walk of faith and God will meet us there you know the Bible says draw close to me and I will draw close to you so I'll Ask and be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. And you know what? That includes him providing a village to help you accomplish what he has called you to do. Last thing I want to talk about, I guess, is the comment I get quite famous. Oh, I wish you would vlog more often. I guess some people do it three, four times a week. And um, oh my gosh, hashtag family goals. You're so lucky to have everything you do. Your life is perfect. So I'll just both of the things. Number one, I do as well need to vlog more often, but I definitely I think I need to focus more on being consistent and having a schedule and that's something I am working on and also I guess with you know where I am right now with the studies and work and hopefully you can see how I'm trying to balance everything you can understand why there will be some times where there's a little bit of a break here and there or a gap between videos but I'm working on getting more regular uploads so thank you for you know requesting that it's definitely something I'm working on the other thing as well in terms of the hashtag family goals or perfect life I think I want to be a little bit transparent right now because you know I share the vlogs and just realize that with YouTube everyone just shows you the bits they want to show the best bits and I do often try and share a few more detailed posts in my Instagram posts about you know especially if I'm going through difficult seasons but just to you know be honest with you my life is far from perfect I definitely have my low seasons and my challenging seasons I think in life whatever you go through it's all about how you come out of whatever the test you go through because each test that we go through in life develops endurance like the bible says so it's about the kind of attitude that you have i'm always trying to be a joyful person or positive person because i want to make sure i'm focusing more on god's truth than the enemy's life if i focused on what the enemy's saying he'll say you're not doing it enough i would be relying on my feelings which most times i am exhausted believe me i'm totally exhausted with three kids 
but I know that I'm not anything in my own strength so I rely on God's strength to build me up and each and every day that's why I'm so intentional about you know getting quiet time and because he's the one who's going to fill me up he's the one who's going to give me wisdom he's the one who's going to give me strength I can't get it from the world I'll just be completely drained and for that I'll be running on empty so that's why I get I guess my smiley and happy and positive outlook on life so with that said though I want to share with you I don't know if to call it a testimony or just a um you know praise report a little bit of encouragement of you know what has happened in the past and where I am now the so last year I was going through a season where I just started feeling very anxious and was definitely going through a very dark season there was a lot of things happening at that time and so I got to a point I thought okay maybe you know having this much on my plate doesn't help as well so I thought what can I cut out I've got the studies my work and my YouTube as well my voice is a full-time job which I enjoy but it's very demanding and YouTube was something I did for fun and I knew it encouraged people. That's really the focus of it, just to share my journey of faith, marriage and motherhood with a young growing family and offer advice and encouragement where I could. I never thought of it in a business way, you know, that's why you didn't never see ad on my videos or sponsored by or anything like that. It literally was a hobby, but it's a hobby that took a lot of my time and still does. It takes a lot of time editing, filming, planning videos, but it's something I enjoyed doing, but during the season I just thought I just need to cut it out. You know when you want to make sure it's God's leading, so you're like, Lord, if there's anything you want me to cut out, just let me know, even though in my head I already planned it was going to be YouTube. And I was like, no, I want you to cut out your job. I was like, oh. You know, you're like shaking your ear like, what was that? Sorry, did I hear wrong? And I heard it again, I want you to leave your job. And I always thought, when people talk about that whole quitting their job thing, I was like, quit my job. I was like, you mean quit my job that is my full time, that pays the bill. I'm like, God, you know we have three kids. You know you're trying to reason God, you know, God pulls a full stop and you just try and add a comma there. If you look at the video my husband and I did on how we manage finances, you realize I am the one who is Miss Calculator and I know every penny and where it goes. So I was even able to process that this did not make financial sense, that I am paying money on my course and I am investing time on my YouTube videos but there's no financial reward from them. So I just felt like, wait, we're going in negative Lord. Like, this doesn't make sense. And you know, I started thinking, no, no, this can't be God, this can't be God. But like I said, when you spend time with God, and I've been spending time in prayer daily, I know how to hear his voice. I may not hear what I want to hear, but I know when it's him. So obviously I spoke to my husband, and we prayed about it, and he was just like, you know, baby, you just do what, you know what he's told you to do and so I stopped my job and I'll be honest with you I kind of had this vision okay I've done the whole quit my job thing it's not like I announced it or anything and I left my job on really good terms and in my notice I was like okay God um so when's it gonna happen you know and you're like when's the big thing gonna happen someone's just gonna come up to me give me you know an envelope and say God told me I bless you nothing let me see what happened the following week, it was my husband's mum's sixtieth, so she flew down, we were all planning the party, and to be honest, I kind of took my mind off things, so we were all excited planning her sixtieth birthday party. And that week, I started getting headache, I was in the gym, and I was running, I was like, oh, my head really hurts. So then the following day, it carried on, and I didn't think anything of it, you, know, you think you have kids, you have a busy life, it's probably a bit of migraines, even though I've never had migraines before. Before I knew it guys, from the day I had the first headache to about three days later I was rushed into hospital fighting for my life because I contracted bacterial meningitis and it was the biggest shock of my life and the most testing time, when I say the most testing, the most testing time of my entire life. I had three children, Caleb was already born by now, and you know what, it just felt like attack after attack after that, we had some attack in our finances, we had some health scares with another family member, and I literally just got to a point where I felt so overwhelmed, but then I was reminded of another scripture in James, and it just reminded me that through tests, it develops endurance, and this time I'm spending time in God's Word and really just getting out this woe is me mentality which is hard to do when you just feel so overwhelmed. I was able to get back in the Word and really just focus on God and that's what it does. It's nothing that makes you cling close to God than when you know everything around you is crumbling and 
with him he's the only one that stayed constant and I experienced that peace of the Holy Spirit and joy of the Holy Spirit and even though everything else looked like chaos I was able to just maintain peace so after a few weeks I was healed I was able to make a full recovery thank God because meningitis is is serious guys it's really really serious and so my mother-in-law was able to fly back home and my husband stayed with me a few more days before returning back to work and as I got my strength back and I was feeling a lot more, you know, a lot more myself, I ended up getting a email from a company called Channel Mum and they were like, oh, we have an event called VidCon, like mum, um, but it's a mummy VidCon, you know, our UK version of VidCon, but for mum. I don't really think much of it, I just thought, okay, it's an opportunity to meet other mummy vloggers. And it was a great day, I went to Google headquarters and I posted a picture on Instagram to just, you know, connect with other mommy vloggers and I kind of just, just get some inspiration and motivation for my channel and to be honest, I kind of thought that was the purpose of it and that was God just saying, you know, I'm still encouraging you to pursue your channel. I learned so much from that event as well as, you know, networking and meeting other amazing mommy vloggers who actually do this as a job, which I never even knew it was. Like I said, I didn't think anything of it, I just got a bit more, you know, winning myself to carry on with my videos, but, you know, still obviously staying true to myself and the purpose behind it and talk about faith, marriage and motherhood. And then I got a phone call which really took me by surprise and it was, you know, the managers of Channel Mum and they contacted me saying, we would like to offer you a one year contract to become one of our sponsored vloggers. I remember just like my jaw dropped like huh me because I just thought you know I just make YouTube videos for fun am I really a mummy vlogger I never really you know put myself in that niche or category and so they gave me some time to think about it and again obviously went to my husband and prayed about it everything and he was excited for me and fully supported me and then um, I felt led to just take up the offer, sign the contract and join them. And you know, it's one of the things with vlogging as well is always what you put in is what you get out. So I know I need to work hard, but it was just a reminder again to me of God's faithfulness. If you remember when I started the story, it was from God saying earlier that he wanted me to leave my job and with that came a ton of attacks and then I ended up getting this offer to join Channel One. So after that, I then got another phone call that same week from a colleague just telling me there's a practice and they're looking for an associate dentist and they really think I'll be perfect for the role and it's local to where I live. And at first I was wanting to hold back because I wasn't too sure because you know I just you know quit my last job, God told me to quit my job and I want to make sure I stay obedient but at the same time I was like it's you know quite rare to find a practice this local with a vacancy. And that's, I guess, part of my issue with my old job. As much as I loved it, when I look back with hindsight, also the fact it was so far away, I was doing a long commute, and that in itself is tiring. So I prayed about I had peace about applying. I went in for the interview. When I say applying, like I said, the job came to me. You know, this is someone calling me about an opportunity that they had already, you know, told the manager that they feel I would be perfect for, and I even got an email to come for an interview. So I showed up. I got the job on the spot and the thing about this was the fact that this job offered flexibility which my previous job never offered my previous job was like you start at this time you finish at this time and we might even make you work longer so it offered the flexibility in terms of me being able to work around my kids because the twins are actually going to be starting school and um, this next term coming up that they're going to actually start reception year and so I was even thinking oh maybe I should start a job because I don't know what my schedule will be like when they start school I want to make sure I'm there for helping them settle in and they covered all of that without me even you know having to push or anything they said no way to work around you if you need a few weeks off in September when your kids start school that's fine if you want to start a bit later so you can drop your kids in school we can work around that and guys God is he's just so faithful because the job I clung on to for dear life the job that I really enjoyed the job that was long hours was a long commute yes was full-time and gave me job security and pay for and stuff i was able by being obedient by letting go of it finally letting go of my life finally being obedient god was 
able and it seems like with analogy when you open your hands and let go of things god is able to give you what he has for you but he only asked for one thing a step of obedience and with that came a job which i you know which i'm able to do now where it's flexible i am in a position where i'm able you know to drop my kids and be able to get to work and they give me options if i want to leave early and it's a very friendly environment it's local so i'm not spending half my day commuting which i was in my old job and yeah that is pretty much where my life update is now and i guess just also a reminder that god truly does protect us through those moments that seem like rejection where we feel like we've been forgotten because he actually sees and understands the bigger picture and all we have to do is trust him and one of my favorite scriptures which has been a cornerstone for me is romans 8 and it says everything works out for the good of those who love him accord according to his purpose so i pray that you are encouraged by this video and i will see you in my next one bye